This is the Infinity Flow S1 Plus. It's their new and improved version over the original S1, and this thing allows you to run spool after spool over the course of a print without the need to pause or purge. It's universal and works with most printers, and doesn't need you to update any firmware or change anything in your slicer. And if you've seen any of my videos recently, you'll know that I've been trying to find the optimal solution for this very problem. I bought the AMS2 Pro to see if that could do it, but turns out it can't. Then I tried the Wise Pro Auto Filament Buffer and that didn't work either. So now I figure, third time's the charm. Hopefully this one will be the winner. <laughs> I hope. So after I quickly unboxed it, it was now time to see if it worked. And to begin with, it didn't. Turns out it's not as plug and play as I thought, and there are a few things that you need to set up and calibrate before it's actually gonna function properly. But after I'd calibrated everything and set it up properly, it worked. It worked really well. It works! So let's go through the setup. So the first thing you need to do is plug it in and place the unit where you're gonna be printing from. The next step is to install the Bowden tubes that are supplied with the kit and should already be pre-cut. Place the two short ones in the front and the long one in the back. It's important to make sure that these are pushed all the way in as having them slightly out can cause feeding issues. And depending on where you've placed the S1 will depend on how much you need to trim your rear Bowden tube. The aim is to get it as short as possible to avoid unnecessary travel distance and reduce extruding issues. If you do need to shorten the rear Bowden tube, make sure you use a purpose-built Bowden tube cutter as using something like scissors or a flat edge cutter will deform the tube and cause feeding problems. Also, depending on your printer, you may need to install a Bowden adapter or a lock or both. But for my P1S, it just plugs straight into my rear Bowden coupler. Now it's time to install the snag cutters. The way I like to do it is by putting on two spools, one that is kind of full and one that is kind of empty, because this is gonna help us in the coming steps. To start, attach the snap fit quick mount to the base and insert one of the other pre-cut Bowden tubes into the top by pushing it in as far as it can go. Then place the plastic filament guide onto the tube. This little plastic tip helps prevent the tube from getting stuck in the spool. Then place the cutter onto one of the small tubes at the front that you've already installed. Make sure everything is pushed down as far as it can go. Repeat this step for the other side. Now you may need to adjust the length of the Bowden tubes on the cutter, because if they're too long, then they'll wrap around the spool, causing excessive tension, which will most likely result in false triggers. If they're too short, then the cutters won't have anything to push against and won't engage at all. So again, using your purpose-built tube cutter, cut them to the appropriate length. And while you're doing this, just make sure that the cutter is fully activated with two blue bars, so you're cutting it at the correct length. Two blue lines is the regular mode, which requires more force to cut and is less prone to accidental triggers. One blue line is sensitive mode, which requires less force to cut and is easier to trigger. When you don't see any blue lines, then that means the cutter has performed its job and needs to be reset. I just start with the default mode, two blue lines, and go from there. What mode you use will depend on how powerful your extruder is, or your filament, or both. Now these can be a little bit fiddly to get working, so if you're really struggling, then check out their troubleshooting guide. I'll leave a link in the description. Now it's time to load the spools. It's very important to make sure that the start of each spool isn't bent or damaged in any way, as this can easily cause jams. So make sure that you inspect the beginning of each spool and cut away any defects with the Bowden tube cutter. Giving it a nice flat surface instead of a pointy one ensures nothing gets caught along the way to the extruder. Then push the filament from the first spool through the filament cutter and into the motor until it grabs on and begins to feed into the extruder. While this is happening, make sure you hold the tip of the filament cutter to prevent accidental false triggers. Once it's finished, you can then load the second spool. Place the filament through the cutter in the same way as before, and the light should turn yellow. It's important to note that this doesn't always mean that the filament has been loaded, merely that it has been detected. You'll need to push it down a little further until the motor grabs onto it and pulls it in slightly. Occasionally, you'll have to use one of the tabs at the front to allow the filament to pass through to the motor. So if you want to double check that you have loaded it correctly, if you just gently pull on the filament and it doesn't come out, then that means it's good to go. Now load the filament on your printer and it will be ready to start printing. To unload, remove the filament from the other inlet and begin the unload process from your printer's interface. Then push the unload button at the back and the filament will start to come out. Once it reaches the filament cutter, hold down the blue lever at the front and pull it out. So now that we've set everything up and we've figured out how to load and unload the filament, it's time to move over to the app. 
Once you've made an account, go to the device tab and click add S1 Plus. Now go over to your S1 and find the button underneath and push it until the lights start to flash blue. Go back to your computer and click search devices and hopefully yours should pop up. Note that you will need Bluetooth on your computer for this step and you'll also need a computer, not a phone or a tablet. You'll also need to make sure you use Chrome or Edge as these have the best web Bluetooth support. Then once you're connected via Bluetooth, you'll need to connect the device to your Wi-Fi network. You'll need to enter your SSID manually, then enter your password and your S1 should automatically update once it's connected. For manual updates, just click this little update button. Now I would like to go over the filament profiles, however this functionality hasn't worked since the day I got it. So I've submitted a bug report and hopefully it'll be fixed by the time you watch this. So now your S1 is connected, you'll see a little slider that says preload force. This is very important to get right, because <laughs> if you don't and you get it too high or too low, then nothing's gonna work, as I found out myself. Well, yesterday was a total failure, so it's really just a bit of trial and error. However, on their website, it does say to keep this as low as possible and only increase it when you need to. So if I were you, I'd start out with a low preload force, do a test sprint, see if it works. If it doesn't, bump it up. If it does, then you can leave it as it is. You'll know that you've set it correctly if your spool swaps run perfectly and your filament cutter isn't making any noise, like this. I have a P1S and I use Sunlu filament and I found that the normal preload force worked really well for me. But the amount of preload force will change depending on your setup. So this is something that you're going to have to calibrate yourself simply by running a bunch of test prints. And like the AMS, lighter spools have a tendency to want to fall over. So in order to fix this, you can use 3D printed spool weights like this. Otherwise, you can always print out their experimental holder, which has higher walls to prevent nearly empty spools from falling over. I tried it out and it seemed to work really well. Even when the spool was nearly empty, the spools remained straight and continued to feed properly. Even when it came to the very end of the spool, the higher walls prevented the spool from completely falling off. Printing and assembly was really easy. All you need to do is remove the bracket at the front and back, then remove one screw on each spool holder, unplug the Bowden tubes and they should come right off. Then remove the rollers by hand and transfer the bearings to the new spool holders. The rear rollers should just pop in, however the front rollers will require you to remove the screw to install them. Just make sure the roller spool guides are both facing inward. Now repeat the disassembly steps in reverse to put it all back together, remembering to plug the Bowden tubes back in. There are some rubber feet on the base of the original that you can try to use, however they have been glued in place and may become damaged if you remove them. So instead I just stuck some little foam stickies to the base until I can be bothered designing some TPU feet. You can also print out their rigid cutter adapter to make the cutter more secure. This means that you don't need to worry about the length of the cutter's Bowden tube as it now uses the adapter to provide the cutting tension as opposed to the spool itself. To install them, place the adapters on either side, then push the Bowden tube as far as it can go. Then remove the adapter from the cutter and push it into the new adapter. This may take a little bit of wiggling to get it seated properly, but once the cutter sits flush with the adapter, you're good to go. I think it's really cool that Infinity Flow has made these free printable upgrades and I'm really excited to see what else they come up with to make the S1 Plus even better. Now their website does say that you need to break this device in to get everything working properly. So hopefully this will happen while you're calibrating the preload force and making sure your snag cutter is set to the right strength. As for the quality of the prints, they came out flawlessly. There was no evidence of a filament swap at all. My skulls came out looking perfect without any blemishes whatsoever. Here is a test I did of a smaller version and the transition happened right at the top where it would be the most noticeable. And as you can see, the color transition is just perfect. Here's a wall panel that I've been working on and again, a perfect swap. However, like any product, it's not flawless. So here's some feedback to the team about things that I think could be improved. I really wish there was an update repository where you post all the notes of what you've done on each update so we can see what's been fixed and what hasn't. Also, I know the website or app is still in beta, but it still needs a bit of work. It'd be great if you could put a tooltip next to the preload force to kind of tell people how it works or how to calibrate it, because at the moment it's just kind of like, here's a setting, have fun with it, and good luck. Even something as simple as saying, start with a low preload force and go from there, because really I had no idea what the preload force even did, and I just thought, oh, put it all the way up to high, because 
it's high and that, that makes sense. Strong is good. So kudos to the Infinity Flow team for making a device that fixes a really serious problem in the 3D printing world. Hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching.